Assalamu alaikum. My name is Mahkul Husseini. Today I am going to present about uh, chapter 18, which is about the responsible marketing in a global environment. So in this uh, infographic, uh, we are going to address these five questions. What factors should a company review before deciding to enter a global markets? What are the major ways of entering foreign markets? To what extent must the company adapt its marketing to each foreign market? What are the keys to effective international marketing? And finally, how company uh, be socially responsible marketer? So in this part, uh, I'm going to explain what factors should a company review before uh, deciding to enter global markets. Uh, there are some important factors that encourage a company to enter international markets. For example, um, company in some international market can get better profits and opportunities. That is why they want to enter global markets. And also, um, the company can increase its uh, customers in the international arena. On the other hand, uh, entering to international arena helps the company to reduce its uh, dependence on only local markets. Uh, moreover, uh, so sometimes the companies want to counterattack its global competitor in their home market, in their home markets. Yes, so. Uh, the final one. Since we are uh, living in a globalized world and people are moving easily from one part of the world to other, and uh, therefore uh, companies, customers overseas need uh, international services. Mm, these are the five factors or five reasons that a company uh, want to enter global markets. But there are some these uh, advantages or risk uh, the company should understand that going abroad has some disadvantages too. Uh, firstly, the company might not uh, know about the foreign preference and maybe fail to offer a competitively attractive product. Uh, second, the company should also know about the host country business culture and how to deal effectively with foreign regulations. Third, the company might does not have uh, managers with international experience. Finally, uh, the host country may change, maybe change its business laws and devalue its currency or undergo a political revolution. That is why uh, the company should know about all this risk while entering to a foreign market. So in the second part, I'm going to present about the uh, five ways of entering uh, foreign markets. So the first one is uh, indirect exporting. The company uh, need uh, inter uh, intermediaries to deliver its good and product to customers. For example, a Malaysian company delivered its product to an exporting trading company. After that, this export uh, trading company delivered to a foreign distributor, agent or retailer in USA, for example. And finally, customers in USA will buy from the retailers. The second one, the second uh, way of entering is direct exporting, which means that a Malaysian company, for example, export directly to an importer or a customers in USA who is interested in buying the product. 
The company in Malaysia, uh, Malaysia is responsible for handling the market research, market distribution in USA, shipment, and for collecting the payment. The third way is licensing. Uh, for example, uh, a company in Malaysia authorized another company in USA by issuing a license to access its uh, intellectual property rights such as manufacturing process, brand name, copyright, trademark, technology, trade secret, and ETC. The fourth way is uh, joint ventures. For example, a Malaysian company agree with a US uh, company to combine their resources and expertise in order to open a business together. The risk and the profit will be divided according to their share. So the last uh, way is a direct uh, investment. Uh, when a company get enough information and experience about foreign markets, the company starts direct investment. For example, a Malaysian, a Malaysian uh, entity open its own company in a foreign country such as USA and will have uh, full ownership control on that. So these are, these are the five ways of entering to a global market. And now uh, I'm going to talk about the marketing strategies adoption of, um, of a company while entering to a foreign market. So when a company moves to international market, they must consider uh, all the environmental factors and con constraints such as uh, language, climate, uh, race, occupation, education, taste, different laws, cultures, and societies. Uh, therefore, the company adapting its strategies involves um, changing four pieces such as product, uh, yeah, promotion, uh, price, and place or uh, distribution. So, how they uh, adapt product strategies? Uh, product adaptation means that a company brings some changes in its product in order to meet the needs of customers in in uh, in a market other than the one in which it is made. For example, Toyota company produced a smaller size of car for UK customers than Saudi Arabia because the family size is smaller in UK than in Saudi Arabia. This can be an important part of a company strategy for selling in a, product in a foreign country. So the second one is promotion, uh, promotion uh, strategy adoption or global communication strategy. Uh, actually, changing marketing communication for each local market is a process called communication adaption. A company can use one message everywhere, varying uh, only the language and name. Or it can use the same message and creative theme globally, but adapt the execution. For example, Twitter delivers its message globally through uh, advertising, but uses different language for each country. The third one is uh, price uh, strategy adoption. Uh, actually, multinational companies will face with price escalation, uh, raising the price to cover the added cost of transportation, uh, tariffs, uh, middleman margins, and the risk of currency uh, fluctuations. Uh, pricing uh, choices uh, include uh, setting a uniform price in all markets, a market-based price in each market, or a cost-based price in each market. Market-based price uh, pricing is when prices are set according to current market price for the same or similar product. With a higher demand, a company, uh, 
a company may offer a higher price even uh, if similar products have a lower price, thereby introducing competitive price level. So what is the cost-based pricing? Cost-based pricing is uh, a pricing method that is based on the cost of production, manufacturing, and distribution. Essentially, the price of product is determined by adding a percentage of the manufacturing cost to the selling price to make a profit. Mm, basically, many multinationals are faced with a gray market in international market. Uh, when the price difference in relation to a product increases in two countries or uh, two markets, independent buyer enter the market, buy the products in low cost countries and re-export them to higher price country. So multinationals uh, company try to prevent gray markets by controlling distributor, raising their price to lower cost distributor, or altering product characteristic or services or service warranties for different countries. So the last one is uh, place or distribution strategies adoption. There are three links between uh, the seller and the final uh, buyer, such as sellers, international uh, marketing headquarters, channels between nations, and channels within foreign nations. When multinational companies first enter uh, a country or global market, they prefer to work with local distributor uh, with good uh, local knowledge. But friction often arises later. Distribution channels uh, across countries vary uh, significantly, as do the size of, uh, as uh, do the size and character of their retail units. Although um, large retailers are increasingly moving into new global markets, some have had mixed success abroad. So. What are the keys to effective international uh, internal marketing? So for, for effective internal marketing, the marketing department should be organized in several different ways as uh, following. The first one is functional organization. In, in the most common form of marketing organization, functional specialists uh, such as marketing research manager, a report to a marketing vice president who coordinate their activities. The main advantage is uh, administrative simplicity. So, uh, and this form also can result in inadequate planning as the number of products and market increases and each functional group compete for budget and status. The second one is uh, geographic organizations. Uh, a company uh, selling in a national market often organize its uh, sales force and sometimes its marketing along geographic lines. Some, com uh, some companies are adding uh, area market specialists. Uh, for example, regional or local uh, marketing managers to support uh, sales efforts in high volume markets. So, uh, third one is uh, uh, market management organization. When customers uh, fall into different user group with uh, distinct uh, buying preference and practices, a market management organization is desirable. Uh, marketing uh, managers uh, supervise uh, several market development managers, market specialists or industry specialists and draw on functional service as needed. Uh, market managers are staff with duties 
like those of product managers. When customers have uh, diverse and complex requirement, a customer manager and management organization which deals with the individual customer rather than the mass uh, market or mass uh, or market segment may be appropriate. So the next one is uh, matrix uh, management organization. So the companies uh, that produce many products for many markets may adopt a matrix organization employing both product and, manage, uh, and market manager. In this type of organization, individuals are responsible to report to more than one supervisor or leader. Besides uh, establishing uh, these uh, five type of organizations, the relationship with other departments are very important uh, because under the marketing concept, all, uh, all departments need to think uh, to think uh, about customers and work together to satisfy customers' need and expectation. Uh, the departments define companies' problem and goals from their own viewpoints. So conflict of interest and communication problems are unavoidable. The, the marketing vice president uh, or the CM, uh, CMO must I usually work through uh, persuasion rather than through authority to coordinate the company's internal marketing activities and coordinate marketing with finance operations and other company functions to serve the customers. So how the company be a socially responsible marketer? There are four elements to be considered in order to be a responsible marketer, such as uh, legal behavior, ethical behavior, socially responsibility behavior, and sustainability. The, the first one is legal behavior, means organization must uh, ensure uh, every employee knows and observe the relevant laws. For example, it is um, illegal for a salesperson to lie to consumer or mislead them uh, about buying the product. They may not offer bribes to influence a B2B purchases. The second one is ethical behavior, uh, which means that uh, Ethical marketing refers to the process by which uh, companies uh, market their goods and services by focusing not only on how their products uh, benefit customers, but also how they benefit socially responsible or environmental causes. Uh, companies should ensure uh, their advertisements are honest and trustworthy. In order to build a strong relationship with consumers through a set of shared values. So, the last element is sustainability. Uh, sorry. Uh, the third one is social responsibility behavior. Uh, increasingly, uh, nowadays, people want information about a company's record on social and environmental responsibilities to help them decide uh, which company to buy from, invest in, or work for. Although the business is to make a profit, but the companies have an obligation to be careful about the benefits of a society at large. So the last element is sustainability. Mm, which means the ability to meet the humanity needs without harming uh, future generation. The company should minimize their environmental impacts 
actually uh, the increased interest in sustainability has unfortunately resulted in greenwashing, which gives the product the appearance of being environmentally and friendly without living up to that promise. That is all for me. Thank you so much.